Oh, what's up? You're listening to a very special episode of The Commercial Boys. I'm a commercial boy, Dan Feingold. Oi, Gov, I'm a commercial boy, Jake Beckowitz. <laughs> During our, like, ten-month absence, Jake has become British. Right, love? He is now, we left, he was a 24-year-old from Long Island, he is now a 25-year-old Brit. So. Crikey, mate! <laughs> That's, that's it. That's the extent of my British accent. I, oh. I wanted to come in with something new and, and fresh to give the listeners something something to really talk about. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> Good. This, Good. Is, this is the best I came up with right, in 10 months. Right off the bat, I'm sure the discourse is going to be crazy on this episode. I'm trying to get the discourse moving. Um. Yeah, so it's it's been a while. A lot has changed. We're in a brand new studio, aka just our an apartment. living room in an apartment <laughs> in New York City, baby. We're in the podcaster capital of the world <laughs> we truly are wow this is uh where, where you want to be if you're doing this where they film all the hits i do they film come town here they gotta they gotta do the come town here they do the <laughs> chapo here those are the only podcasts uh-huh <laughs> um jake daniel what do you know about salino and barnes they are injury attorneys and I call 800-888-8888. Is that their current number? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So is this what we're doing? Are we doing Selena and Bob? No, we're doing Cars for Kids. I was Perfect. just wondering. <laughs> um, Dan has been teasing this in the apartment for, I want to say, like two, three weeks now at least. I'm just banging on your bedroom door 3 a.m. <laughs> I'm working on an episode. I got something. He's got a script for this one, which is totally, totally um, out of the realm of possibility for this episode for this show for uh the level of dedication i at least put in but you've like done a deep dive yeah it's actually not the first script that i've written it's just the most polished one it's the most i did have a script yes for uncle magic okay um but this one is is typed now i am finally figuring out what we're talking about today perfect i selena and barnes so i really know very little about selena and barnes other than that you dressed as either selena or barnes for halloween one time yes that's right me and friend of the pod uh (laughs) dave delia who you've heard on this pod before if you're a dedicated listener yeah super bowl episode check it out anyway we were selena and barnes one year (laughs) despicable really brain damaged people you guys have some tumors pressing on a lobe somewhere and it's the same tumor, which is beautiful. Yeah, we are Siamese twins, and we are just connected. Joined by, by that cancer. Uh, uh, cancer <laughs> Joined by that brain cancer. It's the only thing holding us together. Um, okay, I mean, let's just get into it. Hop, right? let's, let's hop on it. So right off the bat, I want to say that there are a few sources that I used for this. Um, I'm going to put them all in the description. I will say that the main source is an Intelligencer article. Perfect. With, uh, <laughs> it's a part of New York Magazine, uh, and it was called Inside the Breakup of Selena and Barnes. So I think I had heard whispers that they had broken up, but I am very curious as oh, to hear yeah, yeah. what's going Spoilers. on there. Spoilers. Um, so when I talk about my quote-unquote research, it is mostly me Googling this whatever article. happened to Selena and Barnes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but th- once again, there are a few other sources. Check the description. We're going to look at some ads. Um, if you are oh, listening forgot. on that's YouTube, what we, do. we watch that's, ads. That's what you like to do. Uh, I'm just going to play them or show you them. Um, and if you are listening on Spotify or whatever, check the description. Again, all the ads are going to be in, in there. In the show notes, baby. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. <clears throat> There's, it's just so much pressure because I've spent so long on this. <laughs> You're like, okay, we're actually doing it. I've spent months writing a script and now it's time to actually I do want to clarify that just because I spent months on it, it doesn't mean it's good. It just means that I'm profoundly dumb. It means it took me a long time to write 12 pages. <laughs> if you live in New York or basically anywhere in the United States, there is a good chance that the jingle for two random personal injury attorneys from Buffalo has been seared into your brain forever. I did not know they were from Buffalo. I'm already learning new things. Salino and Barnes, the injury attorneys, 800-888-8888. Don't wait. Call eight. Perfect. Whether or not you've ever been injured or ever needed a lawyer, you were probably able to sing along with us. 
I, I mean, this line would be more effective if I sang it more, but you know. But I, I knew it immediately. You, you asked me what I knew. That's literally the only thing I knew. <laughs> uh-huh. Spending months digging into Salino and Barnes has given me a renewed sense of awe at the power of advertising. Oh, disgusting. You're turning into my brother who went to school for marketing. I hate it. I love ads now. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> this is a whole new perspective. I'm Somebody take them away. Yeah, you need to be is, sent to the gulag. This is now a pro-commercial podcast. Um, a long time ago, there were hymns that you heard at church every week. <laughs> From the time when you were a baby until you died of old age, no. they would worm their way into your brain until they were intractably linked to you. Today, that space in your brain, that space where God used to live, <laughs> it belongs to whichever personal injury law firm, amusement park, or used car dealership is willing to spend the most money on it. That is a, a beautiful comparison. I, I think... I mean, it's not a it's not a new or, or unique observation to say that money is the new god, but that is is it's good work, good work already. I want to give you kudos on the script. Boost your confidence for this one. You're doing good. <laughs> It's not that these businesses live in our heads rent-free. They are not renting shit. They bought it. They own a little part of our brains. You, me, and millions of other people will literally know Salino and Barnes' old phone number until we die. It's not their current phone number? The number for a law firm that no longer exists. Okay, so it fully doesn't even exist. It's not their old number. It's a defunct number for and, a business that is no longer extant. And in a way, we are all part of the collateral damage. We are, yeah. That's sure. right. To build the end into the beginning a little bit, I will tell you that Salino and Barnes no longer exist. Okay. This is a rise and fall type this of is, story. I was going to say, this is, uh, this is dramatic irony. This is Romeo and Juliet. You are telling the audience this is what the ending is and we 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 are powerless to do anything other than observe it might be more like romeo and juliet than you even know is there kissing do they kiss do they explore <laughs> each other's bodies well that's not the part of romeo Tell me and Selena juliet and barnes explore each other's bodies starting out i was vaguely aware that the two lawyers from the billboards and commercials ended their partnership and that one of them died what honestly minus the death i mostly kind of thought that the story would be funny the two doofy-looking lawyers from the commercials broke up with each other. Yeah. LOL. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Lol is right. Yeah, I'm glad that you don't know that one of them is dead. I was worried that you might Whoa. be aware of that. Oh, no. It is like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, so I basically, when I started, I was like, this is going to be funny. This is like a goofy ad. They both look so awkward. Yeah, like they look, standing next to each other. You said other they were the from ads. Buffalo, and now that I hear that, I can't imagine they have having like been from anywhere very else. Very upstate New York, borderline Canadian energy. Yeah, and also like borderline human energy, which is fairly apt for what I know of Buffalo. Yeah, and these guys like fighting with each other. I was like, this is going to be hilarious. They look like they should be Bills fans, just eternally suffering like dweebs. They are Bills fans. Dollar Bills fans. Fuck off. These guys made a lot of money. (laughs) That's in the script, word for word. Holy shit. Yeah, I have everything that you're saying. This is the months that I spent doing. I was like laying down in a minority report. (laughs) You were in the goo goo seeing all possibility. Like Like doing the Tom Cruise things where you're moving shit with your hands. Yeah, I'm just getting my greasy fingers all over my laptop. (laughs) All over your nice work laptop. (laughs) It's disgusting. Um, Yeah, so while I expected that this would be goofy, what I discovered was actually a mock modern fable about what we must let go of if we choose to realize our ambitions. I discovered a heartbreaking tale about a friendship that could not withstand the sheer weight of all the dreams that had come true on top of it. No personal injury firm ever utilized commercial marketing more effectively than Salino and Barnes, and nobody paid a heftier price. This is, this is, this is a whiplash. Dude who's only seen one movie with (laughs) Getting whiplash vibes vibes from this this podcast. (laughs) Their rise and fall inspired an off-Broadway musical. We were just Mm, speaking about off-Broadway musicals. I should have seen that one. (laughs) I would have been prepared for this pod. Their catchy ads inspired the Salino and Barnes Challenge, where celebrities and Broadway stars covered the jingle in their social medias. That's actually It disgusting. was cringe for me to type that sentence. Yeah, I'm no, sorry that I had to share that with that you. Is, but you could look it up and see is, some like mildly famous people sing the, the 800-888-888 Yeah, that's the theme. apex of what our culture is. The Afghanistan war we just pulled out of, that is what we it were was, fighting this to This is defend. the culture that we fought for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, their journey inspired me to write a 12-page script times New Roman size 12 single-spaced 
what then print it out. What are the margins? Um, normal. Okay, good. <laughs> you can look. It's a lot of text. That is <laughs> normal margins. Single, single spaced, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then print it out so that I can read it to my best friend, Jake. Mm. Hopefully some listeners will join us too, but it's really not about you. <laughs> yeah, it's about us. Fuck off, guys. <laughs> Leave us alone, please. <laughs> Before we get to all that, though, the first ad that we are going to look at today is a boring old newspaper ad. It's not flashy or particularly memorable, but this is the ad that makes the rest of the story possible. Before 1977, lawyers in the United States were not allowed to publicly advertise their services, as advertising violated the conduct rules of the bar. I did not know that. Yeah. In 1976, however, two young Arizona lawyers, John Bates and Van Osteen, were struggling to get enough clients to stay in business. They kind of just said fuck it and bought an ad in their local newspaper. And what happened? And that is the first ad that we're going to look at. Okay. And then we will, we will talk about the fallout. It just says, do you need a lawyer? Legal services at very reasonable fees. Then there's shitty clip art of like the, the scales, divorce or legal separation, uncontested, both spouses sign papers, $175 plus. Two, it's, I mean, the whole thing goes on like that. Bankruptcy, non-business. They're just listing their services. It's not a what particularly you innovative this, this or ad fun ad. It is from 1977. Well, I mean, I think it is particularly evocative of advertisements from that age ads that were uh, like startlingly wordy to to modern viewers after like Apple right, did right. all that this ad is just like a block innovation. of text where they list like all, all the, the things, things that they you might do. need a lawyer for it looks like a normal ad i guess it's groundbreaking in the sense that it is a legal ad which was not allowed which i did not also know the fact that it was illegal to do this yeah which is once uh, uh, mostly astonishing to me because of Every, the fact that everything advertises in the country, medicine advertises too, even though you cannot purchase it, you have to ask your doctor for a prescription. It's it's bonkers that were ever any restrictions on what can be advertised to you. But I forgot that like, you know, before Ronald Reagan. There was a time, yeah. and it, this is less than 50 years ago, where like it was a very different landscape. Yeah, we, di we don't have to live like this. We choose to <laughs> we every day. Reject modernity. Mm -hmm. uh, embrace tradition, Embrace maybe. ads being banned by the state bar. <laughs> Um, so the state bar of Arizona wanted to suspend them for this, but somehow their case ended up in front of the Supreme Court. The highest court in the nation ruled that not allowing lawyers to advertise their services constituted a violation of free their speech? free speech. God, God, free speech, the worst amendment. I was going to say, <laughs> it's like I, Citizens United lawyer ads, just like I, man. I, I'm starting to think that maybe freedom of speech and generally democracy a bad idea. Maybe we shouldn't be allowed to talk. Yeah, I honestly. mean, we wouldn't have podcasts. I was going to say we, we specifically je definitely should not be allowed to talk, <laughs> but um, maybe freedom of speech is not worth protecting. Um, from that point on, the floodgates were opened. In the following decades, tens of millions of people all over the country would be bombarded by hundreds of law firms who advertised their services on billboards, the radio, and television. No firm ever doing so more successfully or more profitably than Salino and Barnes. Yeah. Uh, now, in the 1950s, Ross Salino Sr. was working a series of odd jobs in Buffalo, New York, in order to finance his law degree. Eventually, he and a partner established a Buffalo-based law firm where they would basically take any case that they could get. Okay. Fast forward about 30 years to the early 80s, and Ross Salino's son, Ross Salino, oh, okay. is fresh out of law school trying to make ends meet. I was going to say, because you said he started this firm in what, the 1950s? In the 50s, yeah, uh, yeah. He's, There was no way the Salino that I saw was That's a right. fully, like, 80-year-old yeah, man. Yeah, he does have a portrait of Dorian Gray painting <laughs> in his house. And, <laughs> and the picture was always, I mean, the picture is hideous now, but it was always the hideous to begin with. The picture is Salino, and the picture of him is Barnes. <laughs> Is Barnes the one who dies? Barnes is the bald one. I'm was, not going to tell you which one dies. We'll leave that as like a little morbid twist. At the beautiful. End. But I just love imagining that the portrait was always hideous and it's not like he looks gorgeous now. It's just a hideous portrait for a hideous face. <laughs> it's just, it's, there's nothing special about it. It's just a painting of an ugly dude. It's just a picture I took of some guy I saw on the subway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, you actually can see these men on the subway. Yeah, I mean... Well, I, the one who's living, at least. Yeah. Oh, now I'm trying to think. Which one? I think it's Barnes. I th don't tell me, but I think it's Barnes. Let's I will see not if my tell memory you. is good. Um, Salino Jr. is the Salino that we know and love. Yeah. Um, he noticed that in the back of the yellow pages, some lawyers were trying to attract clients by taking out full-page ads. 
These full page ads cost about one hundred thousand dollars each. Oh jeez! And remember, this is like the eighties. Um, so Salino suspected that they had to be very effective, or else why would anyone waste money? There's on There's no way they would be a hundred thousand dollars otherwise. Yeah. Right. In order to find out more, he called up some of these lawyers and took them out to lunch to talk about how the ads were working out for them. Mm-hmm. Every single lawyer that he met with told Salino that the ads were a terrible investment. Well, that's what you would say if they're doing great and you don't want anyone to jack the prices up on you. That's right. Salino called their bluff. Mm -hmm. And he took out a relatively modest business card-sized ad. He figured if it led to even one large case, then it would be more than worth it. Yeah. And indeed, it was. By the early 1990s, Salino was working at his father's firm, but it was time for Salino Sr. to step down. The firm was looking for someone new to employ when they were approached by a lawyer named Richard Barnes. Oh, Richard okay. Bra- Richard thought that his little brother, Steve, would be a great fit. This Born- is, I was going to say, this is like the shittiest superhero origin story I've ever heard. Yeah, this is the this Avengers. Is Avengers assembly. where one portal opens up and it's just this weird <laughs> looking dude from Buffalo. Guy from <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> do, 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 do. We're both singing this song Don't way wait. out of tempo. Call eight. <laughs> so dumb. He does the fucking Wakanda salute. Don't wait, call eight. Aww. With such like stiff ventriloquist dummy arms. <laughs> because he's got like fucking rigor mortis head in because he's dead. Because everyone in the story is he's thousands dead. of years old. Mm-hmm. Um, he was born in Buffalo, New York. Uh, of course. His mother was a pharmacist and his father sold aircraft parts. And you know what? This... Bio is getting boring. Yeah. Flashback. Add, okay. What were you going to say? Add some fucking spice. Yeah, Add some tragedy, go. please. Flashback. August 2nd, 1990. Under the command of Saddam Hussein, the Iraqi <laughs> army invaded and occupied a small Middle Eastern country called Kuwait. Kuwait. A coalition made up of many allied countries. Now, this is the real Avengers kids. <laughs> was formed to stop Saddam, including 697,000 troops from the United States of America. Oh my God, was Arcelino or Barnes? One One of these troops Uh. was a Marine who saw action with a tank battalion during Operation Desert Storm. Perfect. His name, Steve Barnes. (laughs) That's like Bucky Barnes. (laughs) And one of them, I think one of the Avengers is Steve. That's if Steve Rogers Rogers and Bucky Bucky Barnes Barnes had a baby. This is the most soy thing we could possibly say. I was going to say, I think I literally soy based on this. This is like the superheroes. (laughs) Disgusting. Someone needs to fucking put me down. (laughs) Did I'm sure Steve Barnes would be willing to do it. Uh, Did Steve Barnes join the Marines to pay for law school? Hell fucking no. He got his law degree, then decided he would join a tank battalion. I'm standing up and applying for (laughs) your honor. He deserves our, he deserves all of our applause. If this seems like a baffling life decision to you, I think that this quote from Barnes, the man himself, will clear everything up. He says that his compulsion to enlist was... Almost analogous to a woman's desire to give birth. He goes on. (laughs) Maybe that's one of the reasons that man has been involved in so many wars over so many millennia. Because of this innate desire on the part of men to fight each other and kind of have that experience in their lives. Based. Barnes' brother, Richard, (laughs) once told the Buffalo News that his younger brother, quote, will hike 50 miles from Buffalo to Elcottville with a 60-pound weight strapped to his back. He's done it many times. (laughs) That's the thing about this country is that all these fucking freaks are the ones in charge. All these fucking psychopaths who are like, yeah, no, it sounds cool to go to Kuwait for no reason. These are the people who run the country. This type of uh, uh, psychopathy, psychopathy, is like also what allows you to really excel in in any type of business. I mean, it's this like insane ruthlessness and willing to take... Just like a genuine, that, like, do not seem more there's no other word the other side. than bloodlust. Like he genuine, like he, he said, like this is an innate desire. I genuinely like. I think killing would be fun and interesting and a good way for me to spend my free time. <laughs> right, you just right. need to have that kind of psychopathy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Barnes also once climbed Mount Everest, turning around just shy of the summit when he started to feel sick. Beta. Never mind. I <laughs> he's, he's fucking fucked. fucking loser. <laughs> it would have sounded more badass if I just said he climbed Mount Everest, but I do have to tell you, you have journalistic. Quite integrity all the way to the and top. I, I support that um as we move forward it is important to keep in mind that one of the lawyers that we are going to be talking about for the rest of this episode is a combat veteran who thinks that men have an innate desire to kill thinks that women have an innate desire to give birth and is capable of inhuman feats of physical endurance 
He is what you would get if you introduced a Neanderthal to Joe Rogan. <laughs> if testosterone could get a law degree, it would be Steve Barnes. One of the men who run this law firm killed a guy. For sure killed someone. I don't know for sure, but it's. He, I know he definitely watched like his own men die. die. He, He's it's not entirely familiar plausible, but he with has death. taken a life. Yes. Yeah. Or he has, at the very least, genuinely thought about and been allowed to take someone's life. Yeah, yeah. Now, just because Barnes is an MK Ultra killing machine, <laughs> do not let that make you think that Salino didn't also have a ruthless side. Right after taking over his father's law firm, Salino got a list of all the people that owed his father's firm money and went after them. Oh, God. <laughs> fucking good fella's shit over uh, here. A, a Buffalo news reporter named Michael Beeb says, quote, I had a case involving a poor guy over on the east side of Buffalo that claimed his lawyer was after him uh, to pay his past rent and past water bills and things like that. So I met with Ross Salino very briefly, and he says, Look, they owe my father money. I'm here. I'm going to get that money back. <laughs> he was just matter of fact. It didn't matter how poor this guy was. He's got a job to do. <laughs> These are two unbelievably strong-willed men. Seems that they were placed on this earth just to spite God, and you wouldn't know it from the commercials, but 800-888-8888 is their body count. <laughs> That's right, I wrote some jokes for this. <laughs> you know what, these are good jokes, and I support you uh, <laughs> continuing to write jokes. Uh, now, the day after Selena and Barnes first met, Barnes called, and he was like, uh, so, are you gonna hire me? Which is an annoying move generally, but Selena was into the aggression, and yeah. Barnes was welcomed into the firm. I was going to say, these are the kinds of guys who would hire someone based on the strength of their handshake. These are the men that would absolutely... Yeah. Barnes turn Salino's like, <laughs> metacarpals into dust. And it's like, this is the man I need to hire. These I don't are guys... know if a metacarpal is a bone. Don't email me. <laughs> <laughs> I think these are guys who would go out to a bar and like hire guys based on how aggressively they're the ones hitting up. Yeah, they women. just look for people fist fighting outside of bars and they're like, do you want to be a lawyer? <laughs> which, amongst, which of these men amongst you are Sigma males? These are guys who like genuinely put stock into uh, like fraternity hazing rituals and it's like yeah if you could chug six beers do spins around a baseball bat and then like sink free throws you, you're like a you're a sigma male you're an alpha male and yeah you these be guys absolutely watch 30 minute youtube videos about how to be alpha <laughs> for sure 100 percent um so at this point the pair were about to make a choice that would guarantee them their place in commercial history they decided that they would exclusively practice injury law this was a somewhat risky move because clients don't pay anything up front in this situation. As an injury lawyer, you get a cut of whatever is won in court. Typically, it's one-third. Plus, clients are generally not repeat customers unless they're like Mr. Magoo and they're stepping <laughs> on a rake every single day. Well, this actually makes a lot of sense for them because these are the kinds of guys who would be like, I, I, I eat what I catch. I eat what I kill. And like, basically, they don't get paid unless they they exactly. take something home they're like this is a challenge for them and they're like this will motivate me you yeah. gotta you gotta be a part of that rise and grind mindset you gotta want it that's exactly right and for this to be profitable they would have to cast an extremely wide net and attract a whole lot of clients yeah um shortly after their partnership began selena and barnes heard about a lawyer named morris bart who was dominating Wait, the airwaves in new his orleans name? his name is morris bart perfect fits right in our story mm -hmm. morris bart the duo flew down to meet up with him and gain whatever wisdom they could. Morris advised them to find out how much their biggest competitor was spending on advertising. And double it. And to double it. Nailed exactly it. right. <laughs> I, it's, really dis it's really disheartening how easily I slip into these guys' mindsets. <laughs> I've seen American Psycho one too many times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I'm beginning to see an innate desire to, to kill him. I hear Hootie and the Blowfish going on. Um, so why don't we go ahead and watch a Morris Bart ad. All righty, let's go. I got hurt in this car accident. I needed an attorney. I talked to Morris Bart for free. Pick up the phone and call 525-8000. You can talk to us about your accident right now for free. I had doctor bills, hospital bills. I needed Morris Bart. If you've been hurt in a car accident, call me for free. I'll go after every dollar you deserve. The call is free. Why wouldn't you call? Morris Bart got me my check. One call, that's all. The call is free, Dan. 
The call is free. <laughs> yeah, so this is basically just a commercial where there's a testimonial from some lady. I don't even remember exactly what she says, but she's like, I was injured in an accident and I needed an attorney. The call is free. And then we cut Why to Morris Barr. He goes, if you call me, the call will be free if you call. And then she goes... I, I called because the call was free, and that's why I called. The it. call is free. And then he goes, I'm Morris Bart, and if you call me, the call will be free, free. when you call it on me. Call me for free. It's, uh, he looks like a Christopher Guest character. He looks like someone out of, like, Best in Show. Yeah, like, they, he's just, like, this this friendly uh, looking... Goofy guy. I mean, they're all just, like, yeah, it seems like the goal for all these injury attorneys is to just look like doofy, friendly people huh. who, like, My are approachable. My name is Morris Bart. He sounds, like, almost, like, He's doing. It almost sounds like he's some southern like lawyer, but well, he is southern. Quite. He's from New Orleans. Oh, perfect. So there like, go. yeah, he's got that southern charm. He's really leading heavy into, but he does have the look of some like northeastern liberal elite. Yeah, guy. yeah. And I think that you can see how Salino and Barnes got their inspiration from this because like this is a, a commercial that is incredibly repetitive. It does not present a lot of information other than that like this nice white guy named Morris Bart exists, and, and there's some you should call. Him. element there's yeah. no song so it's not going to worm its way into the recesses and right. like broken bits and fill in the mold between those cracks but Morris in the Bart walked so that yes. Salino and Barnes could, could fly too close to the sun oh, and ultimately fall apart okay <laughs> So Salino and Barnes uh, took took this lesson about doubling their competitors' uh, advertising budget. They took it seriously, and they started dumping all the profits that they won from big cases into ad buys. At this point, the firm only had three lawyers. Nevertheless, they decided to bring in a non-lawyer with a business degree named Daryl Ciambella. I mm -hmm. hope that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Whatever. Uh, to come up with a business plan and to develop television commercials. Now, I need to stress that this is not normal, especially at this time. I was going to say, like, they can't take on that many cases if they're only three lawyers. Well, in 1997, lawyers took their profits from big cases and got houses or got addicted to cocaine yeah. or got divorced. I was going to say 80s is cocaine. I don't know. What, what were they doing in the 90s, drug-wise? Um, Maybe it was still cocaine. I don't know. I Ketamine. Think, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Heroin, whatever. Um, but Salino and Barnes had an unwavering faith that their investment in advertising would one day pay off. For their first television commercial, they turned to a local jingle writer named Ken Kaufman. Okay. Normally, Kaufman was used to working with lyricists, but this time, Barnes actually came up with the lyrics himself. Perfect. Salino and Barnes, the injury attorneys, call 854-2020. It's simple, but subtly genius, Kaufman explains... They're the injury attorneys, not just some of the injury attorneys <laughs> or some of the guys. It's a preemptive slogan, which was brilliant. I have to hand it to them. That is exactly what someone named Kaufman. I, I, I give him the Charlie voice. Kaufman he, voice, right? Because he is actually Jewish. They mentioned uh, this is like from a Vox article, and he talks about how like he did a lot of work for churches, but like I think the wording that they use is, but he insists that he is Jewish, or it's like a Vox article. He wanted, I feel like wanted it to be very clear or something. He wanted it to be very clear that he is. Jewish, so that's why I respectfully give him this voice. You, it is cultural. It is not cultural appropriation; just cultural representation. This is just me putting it's cultural it, appreciation. It's me um, st putting my my facade of a goy voice away and, and, and revealing my true form. <laughs> yeah, when he's off podcast, that is Dan's natural. This voice. is just what the apartment sounds like as soon as we're done recording. Oh my god, I think that was a pretty good one. Yeah, we did really good. We did Dan. really good. They love us. <laughs> <laughs> We're AD they, they love the part where we told them to stop listening <laughs> the ADL fucking comes knocking on the door immediately <laughs> shoots us <laughs> it takes us away to a camp <laughs> <laughs> it's simple simple it's it, uh, I fucked that how did I fuck that up this is simple <laughs> it's simple it's simple it's simple Kaufman says elaborating on what makes the jingle so great Something sinks into the public mind. A song sinks into your mind through repetition. As soon as you've heard something several times, it becomes part of what in the industry is called echoic memory. Sound memory is echoic memory. Sight memory is iconic memory. Icons, just like your computer, echoic memory is exactly what it sounds like. It echoes in your head. You hear it in the middle of the night when you least want to hear anything. <laughs> Like, this is this is great because you have no choice to play it again and again inside of your own brain. There is it's no just, respite. It's an echo chamber. And like I think it is true that like we all do have like 
broken bits of our brain. And instead of actually repairing it, our brain just is like, let's use some sealant. And the fucking music becomes the sealant. Yeah. Just fits into whatever nooks and crannies you got going on in there. Yeah, we love the gum from inside. inside yeah, <laughs> triple dent gum, yeah. <laughs> uh, on how much he made for the jingle, Kaufman said, if I told you how much it was, you would go, oh my God, did you want to charge him? But <laughs> it's always privileged information between me and my client. It's like HIPAA. <laughs> it's exactly like that. It's They're not. the same thing. <laughs> they just also, they just both often involve Jews. <laughs> <laughs> if it's privileged information, it probably involves Jews. <laughs> if it's a conspiracy, or it involves any Jews. type of secret. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't say again, Dan for, Feingold and Jake Berkowitz. I was going to say, can I say for the record, I do love how anti-Semitic we are. <laughs> <laughs> now, various sources, I have revealed my middle name on the pod, so. I have revealed your middle name on the pod, That's I'm true, sure. You've I, me. You, you never reveal your middle name. Anyone who knows your middle name is directly as a result of my interference. <laughs> um, uh, so various sources differ on exactly how much Kaufman made, but it seems that it was probably between three and $5,000. Not nearly enough. Which is a severe undercharge. Yeah. yeah. Um, so much to the chagrin of other Buffalo law firms, the gamble of investing heavy into advertising did, in fact, pay off pretty much instantly. Yeah. Salino and Barnes were able to get clients not through word of mouth generated by jobs well done, but by aggressively inserting themselves into the hearts and minds of anyone in New York with a cable subscription. Yeah. And that isn't to say that they didn't do a good job, it's just that that wasn't even relevant. Yeah, it doesn't matter at that point, because once... Like, you're just on every screen. It doesn't matter. You're like air or water or something. <laughs> um, so why don't you come over here and uh, watch this first Selena and Barnes television commercial. Let's do it. Selena and Barnes, the injury attorneys, call 854-2020. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, Danielle, do you mind? Uh, you know what? I'll take this. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What did we just watch? Uh, we watched a a more of a gospel infused Salino and Barnes commercial. You get some more like rich vocal harmonies and backing. It's slowed down. There's you're able to sway back and forth to it. Visually, they're literally just zooming in on a billboard ad of themselves. It's them, yeah. Speaking of Charlie Kaufman, it is a billboard ad of them, um, and they are standing in front of the billboard, looking exactly as they do on the billboard. It's, it is just a, that that classic billboard that just says "injured?" question mark and then their, their two numbers. faces and then their phone number. It's it's almost like that um, Edgar Wright bit from um what is it hot fuzz where it's, oh, it's, um, it's timothy it's, dalton it's smiling in front of yeah, a picture yeah. of timothy dalton smiling yeah it's just uh them smiling in front of billboards of them smiling and it's, it's just a slow artificial zoom in, in it's post. like the most perfect visual gag yeah yeah and again all you get is their phone number what they do and that they are like friendly and approachable looking and that's all you need yeah there you go um and you'll notice that the phone number at this time is 854-2020. Not, quite, not as quite as catchy as all the eights, but... They can't afford to change their number. Yeah, yeah. Kaufman's uh, tune certainly helps. Uh, so here's Barnes on ads. Jingles work, he says. Is there a great magic to it? I don't know. I think there has been more said about our jingle because lawyers weren't doing jingles. And now lawyers do jingles. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it, there's something to be said for being a pioneer. And whether or not they... Uh, our uh, innovative lawyers, they're certainly pioneers in the advertising game, and for that we must say, namaste. <laughs> yeah, so remember how the entire point of an advertising heavy strategy is to cast a wide net and maybe get one big case? Yeah. Well, luckily for Salino and Barnes, in 1998, a young man named David Rippold was horribly injured in a car accident. Ah, got wonderful. Where in the money? <laughs> Where in? Uh, David was paralyzed on the left side of his body. Oh, perfect. Wheelchair bound, severely limited in his ability to communicate, and could not groom or feed himself without assistance. That actually does sound awful. It is Take it back. truly horrific. No, it's um, genuinely Yeah. Bad. Uh, so this is the United States, and as you can imagine, the subsequent medical bills were enormous. Yeah. If David's father, Mark, wanted to be able to afford to care for his son, he was going to need a good lawyer. Yeah. Uh, so Mark's neighbor actually had gone to school with a nice man named Ross Salino, and he recommended that Mark give the dude from the TV commercials a shot. 
Uh, is Mark, it just because he went to high, he had never used him as a lawyer? No. no it's just like, I went to not, school with a guy on TV. You should go ask him if he's any good at the lawyer in business. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that's actually funny that like they just spent all this money on advertising and like what really got it them was the job was like, kind of just a personal connection. And all, I'm sure the TV commercials helped. helped because like Mark Rapold was aware of this guy. But it's so funny at the end of the day. It's like, I went to high school with the guy on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Everyone's Jewish now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. So Mark Rapold showed up at Salino's house, totally unannounced, uh, and he was impressed when Salino dropped everything just to talk to him. You don't even know that he's a lawyer, says Rapold. You don't even know it. He talks just like a person. Which might be an indictment of lawyers more than his actual <laughs> praise of Salino. <laughs> well, I, it's so weird that at the end of the day, like... We talk about who would you vote for president? I, I just want the guy who's the most human, the person I could sit down and have a beer with. We really all just want a friend. That's yeah, what happens. And, and when that I think is the entire point of the commercials, or at least it's largely the point of them, is to make you feel like they are your friends. You just see them smiling. You can close your eyes and you can see their smiling faces. Well, not to make and you know your their phone number by heart. You probably don't know most of your friends' phone numbers by heart, I, but you know these injury attorneys. Not to make like a microcosm, turn everything into a microcosm of like American like mm -hmm. it, that's like why we're here baby but like i think that's what happens as a result of like the like grueling dehumanization of all these interlocking institutions of like capitalism grinding away at you and like alienating from you yeah and yourself i and mean your it would probably not be as effective if like we actually had like connections strong community and interpersonal connections but and also you'd have no desire to listen to a podcast either. that's true <laughs> so thank you all for feeling so alienated. love capitalism here but like yeah you just at the end of the day, all we want is a friend, someone we feel connected to, someone we can develop some sort of relationship with because we're so fucking touch starved and like starved of any real connection to anyone. Yeah. Um, and yeah. That's what happens. These good commercials, they capitalize on that. They have any way you could develop any semblance of a parasocial relationship is magnifique. When Mark Rapold later met Barnes, he understood how Barnes was Salino's perfect foil. He was the opposite of Ross. Uh, I could tell he was power driven. That's the quote. <laughs> that wasn't clear. <laughs> I uh, could tell he was power driven. That's fucking bleak. Yeah. Uh, when they were in front of a jury, the two lawyers had a solid good cop, bad cop routine. Barnes would tear MFers apart on the <laughs> witness stand, and Selena would plead for the jury to have sympathy for their clients. Mark remembers Selena saying, Don't Mr. and Mrs. Rapold deserve a chance to have a life of their own? But they can't have a life of their own without the resources to help them. I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucked up that you got to beg 12 strangers for any semblance of support, but yeah. That is true, yeah. This is like analog GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, let's not forget that at the end of the day, these are still lawyers. Salino and Barnes were kind of slimy. They decided that they weren't going to tell Mark Rapold that they were planning on asking for $55 million dollars. When he found out, Mark thought that this sum was overkill, mm. greedy even. The Repulse ended up being rewarded with one of the largest personal injury verdicts in New York history, $47 million. I, oh yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, just couldn't be me. If anyone was like, $55 million, I'm like, oh man, I mean, if I have to take it, I guess I'll be awarded $55 million. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is that, like, they hid this from the Repulse. Which, I mean, if anyone wants to hide giving me 55 if anyone right <laughs> now is hiding giving me $55 million, I want you cowards to come out of hiding and tell me right now that you're going to give me 55 Stop it. Stop hiding this from me. It's, it's I'm wrong. I'm not mad about the $55 million. I'm, I'm just disappointed you and you me. lied to me. So, I mean, if anyone wants to come out, out and tell me now is the appropriate time. With this judgment, the game was completely changed. It used to be that personal injury lawyers belonged to a sort of close-knit community, but this was a sign that a new era of ruthless competition had begun. The stakes were suddenly far too high for the status quo to remain. After the verdict was announced, members of the Salino and Barnes firm were partying in the hallway. As you can imagine, though, Mark didn't really see this situation as a cause for celebration. Salino noticed that Mark was looking sullen and tried to offer him some comforting words. Meanwhile, Barnes was doing a keg stand. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't literally doing a keg stand, but Barnes did not say shit to Mark. Spiritually was doing a keg stand. <laughs> <It> is, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
he uh fucking uh crossed planes what is the thing the tiktok kids are doing i sound so old right now Barnes hex to the moon <laughs> yeah some shit like that he was astral projecting, projecting into yeah. a liquor store <laughs> um in, in appeals the judgment ended up being knocked down to quote just 16 million dollars mm. it was enough to cover david's care but it didn't make the repulds rich the Salino and Barnes firm made out with $5.5 million and gained invaluable publicity. Going forward, business would be booming hard for them, but it was also all about to start falling apart. Uh-oh. In 2002, Salino and Barnes opened... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Shit t- falls apart in 2000... That seems like premature based on what I know about things falling apart. Yeah, well... I, there is a lot of infighting and drama that goes on while the firm is still in one piece. Okay. I mean, there is a lot that leads to them ultimately But the foundation is up. about to develop a crack. That's exactly right. Okay. The first salvo is being fired. Yeah, so the, the shot heard around the world was... You know what? Actually, that's a little, we're not quite getting to where it falls apart yet, but Perfect. we will get to that very soon. Um... Yeah, so I guess it's a few years after 2002, but it's still early. Anyway, what happened in 2002 was that Salino and Barnes opened a satellite office right across the street from the largest trauma hospital in Buffalo. (laughs) (laughs) Quote, it was like a hospital waiting room in there, says Beeb, the the Buffalo News reporter. People would come in on crutches and wheelchairs and everybody is going to get their piece of the money. Yeah. The firm now had 40 lawyers and started doing mass torts. For example, they would sign up many people for a lawsuit over strokes that resulted from a prescription drug. So yeah, you can see how like everything that they're doing is just an attempt to get the most people in the door as so possible. They were also That's like the why kind they of open look- a d- office right across the street from a hospital with a big light. In so front they of it, turn you know. into the kind of lawyers who are like, if you or a loved one is suffering from mesothelioma, please call this number. You may be entitled to financial benefits. Yeah, I think like that's that. basically what it is. I don't know that they made commercials like that, but that's basically what they're doing. What they're doing, yeah. Yeah. The Salino and Barnes firm at this point gained a reputation for stealing clients from other lawyers, but when their clients would leave, it was not uncommon for Salino and Barnes to levy lawsuits against them for a cut of the potential settlement. Kings, so once get again, yours, get that bag, King. Get little that bit bag. Slimy. I do want to say that I also have read like um, stories about like them being forgiving of debts and them being like generous, but I think that those are like. The impression that I get is that those are one-off individual stories, but that, like, their business model was they really, are like... the exceptions that prove the rule. Yeah, you don't get rich being but, nice. No, you don't. Like, you get rich by hoarding wealth. Exactly. Um, so, in this spirit of maximizing settlements, in order to prevent the repulled judgment from being reduced further, Salino and Barnes hired more lawyers to protect the verdict and billed the repulds $300,000 for it. The repulds never asked for this. They weren't concerned with maximizing their profits. They just wanted to move on from this horrifying ordeal. Yeah. They were pissed off, and they filed a complaint with the state's attorney grievance committee. An investigation was opened, and it turned out that the Repold case was not the only legal impropriety that the committee uncovered. Ah, oh, spicy. It's not unusual for lawyers to front clients the cost of certain elements of litigation. Lawyers will often file paperwork or hire experts at their own expense with the expectation that these costs will be repaid when a settlement is won. When you win. Yeah, that's how those... Someone, I forget where I heard it from, but someone like kind of developed the analogy that these kinds of lawyers who just win a cut of what they earn are like pirates. Someone's Mm. like, someone stole my gold. Um, Can you go get it back for me? It's like, yeah, I'll front the costs and I'll take a third of the gold. And it's like, yeah, I have to pay for the cannons and the ship and the crew, but we get take a third and I give that out. Yeah, yeah, that is really interesting. They're also like pirates in that they do not care about what the laws are. They will stab you in the back, yeah. Yeah. Um, However, Salino and Barnes took it a step further by loaning money to their clients at interest rates of 19 to 24%. Ooh, that's so, fucking, like, loan shark shit. Yeah, that's, that's pretty evil. Salino and Barnes loaned the Repulds money to help pay for David's care, which, okay, is at least kind of related to the case. However, they also loaned them money to build a cabin, which is straight-up indefensible. <laughs> Salino and Barnes were both found guilty of making loans to clients with interest. Yeah. yeah which that's... is obviously illegal. And also important to note that, like, their clients do not have a lot of information. 
which like makes this like particularly predatory. I well, think that's it's like, I mean, it's with... people who called the lawyer because of a commercial. Yeah. This is not someone operating with like a high degree of information. I was going to say, and that's the part of, part of like the legal system in this country is like predicated on how like labyrinthine it is and how dense it is to like navigate. So many people are calling these lawyers at their like lowest points They're They have no like, sense of understanding of what's going on around them. So even if like someone with high information who does a lot of research into, okay, who's the best lawyer, it's like what's going intentionally on? intentionally obtuse. Yeah. You can't ever possibly know everything that's going on around you. That's why even lawyers are so specialized. Like one person who knows like divorce law has no understanding of personal liability law or anything like that. Like it's just so many bricks that have been like layered upon each other since the founding of this country. You can't possibly know everything. Yeah. That, that's, that's a great point. And that's exactly what they're exploiting here yeah. is just like the fact that like nobody especially not like their clients who are just like random people who got into a car accident and then saw a commercial like they're not going to understand know. what's going on behind the scenes no. so like they kind of just and went they shouldn't wild have with to yeah. no of course not um so the firm's legal troubles did not just end there however the justices also found that a retainer agreement that Salino filed in court did not actually match the terms which his client had agreed to Salino claimed that this was an honest mistake, but filing false paperwork is an extremely serious infraction. Before the final ruling came down, Salino and Barnes knew that it was possible that they might both end up suspended. If it all went to hell, the firm would need a designated survivor. They went with Barnes's brother, Richard. For a $350,000 salary, Richard Barnes ensured that in the worst-case scenario, there would still be a recognizable name on the door. That's... Incredible. I would love my my biggest prayer in this world is that my brother becomes obscenely wealthy being coming a Broadway producer. <laughs> and just having the Berkowitz name. And he <laughs> pays me three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year just for my name. That would be the best blessing a brother can give me. <laughs> um uh- In preparation for a worst-case scenario, they also, of course, got to work on ads for a hypothetical double suspension future. This is just Salino Independent and Barnes solo fucking recording. It's just Salino in jail. (laughs) (laughs) Um, They're solo acts. In the end, in 2005, Salino was suspended from practicing law for six months. Barnes only got slapped with a censure. Salino's suspension, quote, was almost like a death, one employee said. Everyone felt bad that it was him that got the blame for it all. Is this the death that you're talking about? He kind of was the scapegoat on that one. (laughs) No, there is a literal (laughs) death. (laughs) But, like, scapegoat is so funny because they fucking broke the law. Yeah, I mean, the idea, though, is that, like, Barnes broke the law just as much as Salino did. I know. Like, it's not that Salino was, like, a rogue agent who was, like, file... Uh, This is just what their business model was, and Salino happened to be the one who got thrown out for it. But that's the thing, like, why was only one of them... Why were only one of them suspended? I don't know. I mean, it might not even be public. I mean, I, I think there's, like... A lot of this that's confidential, so I, I'm and just also not we're sure. not legal experts. Yeah, and also yeah, I'm sure even if I saw the explanation, I would go like, "Oh, okay, okay. this is meaningless to <laughs> <Sure>. me." <laughs> For reasons that were never made public, it ended up taking Salino a year and a half to be allowed to practice law again. Interesting. According to Salino Senior, his son spent his 19 months off doing manual labor building fences, planting trees, and volunteering with Habitat for Humanity. I'm sure. You know, stuff that a man who knows that he needs to atone might do. (laughs) Someone who was told to do 30 to 60 hours of public service. Yeah, someone with a dirty soul would do this stuff. Um, It's it's like what Jimmy Carter does to apologize for being president of Of the the United United States. States, Which every president should have to do. It's spend a lifetime doing public service and community service. (laughs) <laughs> to spend two lifetimes. Jimmy Carter's never going to be allowed he's to die. He's not allowed to die. The reason he's still alive <laughs> That's his punishment. Is he was president. That's his punishment for being one of the best presidents. <laughs> is you will never do enough <laughs> to atone for your sins. Um, uh, so when Salino finally came back to the firm, everything was different. After Ross Salino returned from his suspension, he and Steve Barnes would simply never be able to see eye to eye again. Oh, no. And honestly, it's not even totally clear why. Well, he's a changed man. It's like when a baby bird gets touched and the mother won't take care of it anymore. (laughs) The love was just gone. 
And by the way, this is not actually true about baby birds, but <laughs> too honest. But it is true of humans that when you touch someone, are, <laughs> when you it's touch impossible a baby, for them to love you or know you. Yeah, I mean, you probably shouldn't be touching baby birds either way, but that's not Yeah, why. they got like diseases and shit. So that's the end of part one. <gasps> We're not going anywhere. We're going to record part two right now. But for those of you who are still listening, um, I'm going to release part two exactly a week after this one comes out. So, so I don't know what day that's going to be exactly yet. Because we are not stay operating tuned. on any feasible time Yeah, scale. one week later after this, you're going to be able to listen to part two. And see what exactly led to the downfall and eventual death of Salino and Barnes. Exactly right. Um, yeah, so if you got commercials you want us to look at, you got anything to say to us, anything you want us to dig into, I mean, just email us at commercialboyspodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we uh, hopefully have something interesting in the works as a result of some emails. So if you got any ideas or anything you want us to take a peek at, we will more than likely um, be willing to watch some commercials at your behest. You, yeah. you tell us what to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and we will take six months to do it. Uh, Dan, you got anything you want to plug? Any uh, social media you want people to check yeah, out? Yeah, you could just check me out on Twitter at Dan Feingold. Um, and uh, we have another podcast that's that right we, maybe we'll get back up and running uh, first film podcast where we take a look at a director's filmography specifically through the lens of their first film um, and you can follow me at Aaron Burko it's spelled like the uh, 18th century politician on uh, on Twitter yeah and we just did a, a Charlie Kaufman episode for first film which yeah. I think is pretty good so check, check it, it out, out. yeah all right, love. All right. See you in one week, baby. See you in a week, mate. <laughs>